But now I want to talk to you about symbols, totalitarian symbols, and a haunting echo of the nationalist collectivism we thought we'd left behind in the 20th century. If you've been keeping a keen eye on the footage emanating from Putin's invasion of Ukraine, on TV and, of course, on social media, you may have noticed the Russians have been adorning their military hardware with a new symbol, the letter Z. Yes, you'll see it painted on Russian army lorries and armoured vehicles as they slug their way through Ukraine. You'll see it brandished by Russian troops on their uniforms and vehicles. You'll see it in propaganda videos. You'll even see it increasingly within the Russian Federation as well. Russian civilians wanting to show their support for Putin's regime and his war of aggression have painted the letter Z on their cars and their vans. And at a Gymnastics World Cup event in Doha over the weekend, Russian athlete Ivan Kuliak prominently wore the symbol on his shirt after poetically being beaten by a Ukrainian competitor, Ilya Kovtun, who won gold. Now, the rapid spread of this letter Z, a letter that doesn't appear in the Russian alphabet, is hauntingly evocative. Not just the fact of a new, easy-to-draw, easy-to-recognise symbol representing an expansionist totalitarian regime, but down to the sharp, angular lines of the thing. There's something distinctly fascistic about it, like a new rune to represent Putin's warped interpretation of history. His attempt to build an ethnocentric cult within a militaristic state with no free media, no free assembly and no free thought. We're seeing the merging of two great totalitarian evils of the last century. To me, Putin, his imperialism, his symbolism, represent a fusing of Stalinism and Nazism. A one-man Molotov Ribbentrop pact. And he needs this symbolism because his war of aggression is not going exactly to plan. Poor logistics, weak supply lines and no lightning attack. Putin will need more men and more motivation to succeed, and this is where this new, disturbing propaganda comes in. Now, according to Camille Galiv, a fellow at the Woodrow Wilson Centre, Z stands for either Zapobody, meaning victory, or even Zapad, meaning West. Yes, we've moved beyond hammers and sickles and swastikas. The totalitarian cause in Europe now marches under the letter Z. So to my mind, we're back in this age of symbols. If we're really there, we had thought we'd, we'd better to get a symbol to counter Putin's Z. And I can think of no better than the old Churchillian V for victory.